All righty, guys, welcome to night one of assistant instructor presentations of Open Waters chapters one and two. Um, what we're going to be doing tonight is having Caleb present to us uh, chapters one in the 30 minute section and chapter two in a 30 minute section um, with the idea of going through uh, making sure we're covering the appropriate information and the information needed for the actual class before we just turn him loose um, on uh, instructing and hoping he does it right. So. Uh, we'll be going through, we will be using the academic training evaluation form. So be aware that uh, all presentations need to make sure that they cover the key the key points. Where this will expand will be more real world expressions. So um, the introduction and the summary will be a little bit more difficult, um, but they're still required to make sure we're covering a basic idea of what we're going through and then restating it for objective. So uh, uh, when Caleb, you're, when you're ready, we'll go ahead and jump in and uh, have you start. All right. Um, I think I am good to go. Only question is, uh, Ben and David, do you, I want, you guys want me to treat you as students? We are abs absolutely students and evaluators. All right, so I'm I will call in for questions and stuff. Never done this before, so. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So my name is Caleb. We're going to be going through the first couple chapters of the open water uh, course tonight. I want to do a couple introductory things. So um, as we are getting introduced to diving, um, we want to uh, the way becoming good divers really come is is done through increasing our knowledge, skills, uh, making sure we have the right equipment, knowing how to use that equipment and getting experience. We're going to start that journey tonight with knowledge and some skills. And um, we're going to talk a lot about what that journey looks like as we go along. So congratulations, you are starting your career as a diver tonight. Um, this is the first of hopefully many fun evenings or days doing things surrounding diving. Um, we're going to go through uh, a lot of what the total dive system includes, uh, especially in the first two chapters here. So uh, we will get into all the details of, of what all this is. And um, I wanted to encourage you to ask questions and, and let's dig into what doesn't make sense as we go along here. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, so you should, uh, related to the total dive system, you should already have your circle system. You need to have your mask, fins, and snorkel. Uh, to start, if you don't, we can work with the shop tonight to get that uh, purchased for you. Um, so you will need that tonight if you don't already have it. And um, one thing to keep in mind as you're starting to pick up gear, if you don't already have gear, uh, is you want to think about uh, purchasing it from people who can uh, help you maintain it, keep it serviced. Uh, it can be a real hassle to ship stuff off uh, to get it serviced. And it's also, I can tell you that buying cheap stuff, uh, is a great way to have to buy a lot more stuff or have gear fail in the middle of a dive. You don't want that. So cheaper is not always better, better. Um, this is the first of, we're going to have six academic sessions. We're gonna do pool sessions. We'll do one later tonight and we will, to get certified, you will need to go through the open water, um, uh, dive dives. There'll be four of them, uh, after we finish all the pool and academic sessions. And um, as part of the academic session, so you should have gotten access to your material uh, before tonight, and hopefully you've started being able to go through your material. Who here has started their material or started going through all their material, the written material so far? Anyone? A little bit, David? Good. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, um, but you'll want to have at least chapters three through four done by our next session. And we're going to cover one and two in this evening. Um, and that's that's required to get your certification at the end. Uh, and then you got to participate in the academic sessions, the pool sessions and complete the open water dives to get certified. Um, so this is we're going to talk a lot about this as well with regards to how our uh, the how we approach diving as responsible divers and and we remind ourselves of these of these things continuously in the diving community because we want to stay safe and we want to be responsible so we always want to dive within our limits we always want to evaluate our conditions as we are uh, approaching a dive planning a dive thinking about another dive we want to make sure we're familiar with uh not only the conditions but also our equipment uh before each dive, sometimes our equipment changes. Sometimes you're renting. Sometimes you're you're uh, using some a new piece of equipment. You want to be familiar with that, and you want to be using the buddy system. So we talk about the buddy system 
a lot, but it's really, I like the term, uh, the, uh, the fact, I like saying that um, diving is a team sport. It's not just diving with a buddy. You're diving as a team when you are diving. We'll talk a lot about what that means. But uh, first and foremost, it means we should never be doing this by ourselves or trying to figure things out by ourselves. Ask questions, work together. It's a team sport. Um, and remember, we are responsible for our own safety. Uh, just because it's a team sport doesn't mean someone else is going to take care of you. We each need to take responsibility, both of ourselves and of the environment. We want to leave the dive site the way we found it. If you haven't already, I want to encourage you to download the SSI app. This is also another way to get access to your material, if you didn't know that already. Who here has downloaded the app already? Anyone? Good. David's on top of it. <laughs> so you want to download that app if you haven't already, and you will want to put your picture in there, get your profile started. You'll need to accept. There's some materials you'll have to fill out uh, in the app as well. If you don't have a profile picture with your face in it, we may have to go find a picture that is less flattering of you uh, to add that to your profile um, so that it is updated before you complete the course. So keep that in mind. If you have questions, we can go over that after class. If you have any issues, we can work together on that. All right. So let's dive in. Let's talk about the aquatic environment and how it affects us as divers, how it affects our bodies. Some objectives we're going to cover here in this section include, we're going to talk about why pressure on an object increases as it descends underwater, and we're going to talk about examples. Uh, we're going to explain why uh, the air volume in a flexible container decreases as it descends underwater, and we're going to talk about examples. Uh, we're going to calculate uh, the total pressure exerted on our bodies as divers when we are diving at a given depth. And we're going to talk about what that means in bar um, versus other terms we might use. We're going to talk about uh, the different air spaces in our bodies and how uh, the effects of pressure may affect those air spaces as we dive. And we're going to talk about uh, the procedure for equalizing uh, the pressure uh, on in our ears or in, in the air spaces in our body as we dive. And we're going to talk about the effects of depth. Uh, as light penetrates through water at various depths. Um, as divers, we want to understand how the aquatic environment differs from what we are all used to. Most of us don't live underwater. I know Ben does, but most of us don't live underwater. Um, so the aquatic environment is very different than what we're used to. And so we want to understand that we want to anticipate and proactively react appropriately to help keep us safe and comfortable as divers. And that's Let's, we're going to cover a lot of things in that uh, toward that end in this section. Key points to remember, water is a lot heavier than air. Therefore, it creates higher pressures, more water, more pressure. Uh, in a soft compartment, air volume increases as pressure decreases and vice versa. We must anticipate, plan, and adjust to the changing pressure throughout the dive. And remember, we want to equalize pressure early and often. That will save the dive. All right, so do you think, I got a question, do you think water is heavier or lighter than air? David? I mean, you just said it was heavier. All right, well, good. I'm glad you were listening. <laughs> so how heavy do you, do you, have you ever thought of air as having a weight to it? Uh, yeah, I remember this thing I did when I was a kid where we like put two balloons on a balance and blew one of them up. And one, and they, they yeah. had different, uh, yeah, the, the blown one up one was heavier. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We don't think about it often, but the air around us and above us has weight. I mean, you think about the air all the way up to space, that air, there's a lot of air above us. And that's pressing down on us. It has a weight to it. And same with water. Um, the deeper we go in water, the greater that water is going to, to press on us. And we call that pressure. Um, now, do you think all types of water have the same weight? Do you think it would, would salt water have a different weight than fresh water, for example? Probably. Probably. 
Can you guess which one might be heavier between salt water, say in the ocean, or maybe fresh water, say in a lake? Which one do you think would be heavier? Uh, the stuff with or the water with more stuff in it. So probably the salt water. Salt water, exactly. So in this class, we'll talk about the weight uh, and we'll talk about how to calculate the, the pressure of the water. And we'll usually use the, the, the calculations for salt water because it's slightly heavier. But just keep in mind that fresh water is often slightly lighter. So the numbers may be slightly different sometimes. So when we, when we think about the weight or pressure of water at various depths, there's some terms we want to think about. Um, we talk about atmospheres, so it's abbreviation of ATM. Uh, we talk about uh, bar, which conveniently happens to be the, the equivalent to atmospheres. Um, we also talk about PSI, um, pounds per square inch. Um, so here in America, we have a funny habit of making things complicated. And so we, we love to use things like PSI that are different than, say, bar, which is what you'll find a lot of places elsewhere in the world. Um, did you say, so, did you say bars are equal to atmospheres? Uh, yes, not, it's not exactly equal, uh, but, um, they, they are often similar, very, very close. So, um, so as we're talking about the, the depth, as we go down in the water columns, as we dive down and we have a soft compartment of air. Let's say a balloon. You mentioned a balloon. That's a great example. So we have a balloon. It's filled with air at the surface and we put it underwater. What do you think is going to happen to that balloon as we go down in the water with that balloon? Ben, any ideas? Um, it'll get bigger. It's going to get bigger. Okay. David, do you agree with that? Uh, I think you're going to pop it. You think it's going to pop as you go down? Okay. All right. Well, funny enough, as you, if you put a balloon underwater and you press it down as far as you can go, it will actually get smaller as compared to the size it was at the surface. Um, the reason for this is the pressure is increasing around the outside of the balloon, which is decreasing the volume of the air inside the balloon. And because it's a soft compartment, it's not a hard compartment. It's not like a, a, a steel uh, uh, balloon or steel cylinder. We'll talk about cylinders later. Uh, then it will it will actually uh, decrease in size and it will decrease the volume there. Same might happen with like a water bottle. You might take uh, a you might you might take a water bottle that will that will collapse if you put air in this thing and you put underwater way down underwater you might have to go deeper than you can go in a pool but it will it will start to collapse down it will get it'll start to crunch on the sides because of the pressure on the outside so that's because of the pressure differential at various depths now as divers how might that affect us as we are diving down into the water any ideas we're going to get smaller too. Well, well, at least some of us might get, some parts of us might get smaller. <laughs> yeah. So have you ever like been in an airplane when you are landing? Uh, what happens to your ears when you're landing in an airplane? I know, I know you've been in an airplane before, David. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the you feel that pressure in your ears as you're coming into land. That's because you're going down in the air, uh, and and so your pre the air pressure is increasing. The same thing happens with diving as we go down underwater. Uh, as divers, that pressure is going to increase, and we're going to feel that pressure in various parts of our bodies. We may feel it in our ears. Uh, we may feel it in our um, sinuses. Our lungs, for example, will also. Uh, uh, that pressure will increase on the outside of the body and it, it, will, it will require a higher pressure inside the lungs. There's two other uh, air compartments in the body that aren't listed here. If you did your homework, any ideas what those might be? I'll give, uh, I'll give uh, one hint. One, one of them uh, tends to be... Uh, not something we like to 
talk in polite talk about in polite company. Your rectal cavity? <laughs> Our intestines, yes. What happens when you have pressure in your intestine? It comes out and it's not something you really want to uh, discuss. That, so that there can be air pockets there. Another one is our teeth. It's not one we think about much, but um, all of those air pockets, our ears, sinuses, lungs, teeth, intestines, et cetera, there may be air there. And that, that air is going to be directly impacted by the pressure as we, as we dive down. So that's something to think about. Um, and as we, as we do that, so um, uh, as we're descending in the water column, there's things we might want to think about doing to adjust for that. So we can swallow, for example, uh, you might try that in an airplane too. When you're, when you're landing an airplane, it can help clear your ears, uh, or your sinuses from that pressure, relieve that pressure. You could rotate your jaw. Let's try that together. You can rotate your jaw a little bit. And that might help clear the the sinuses or your ears. That's the most. That's where you're going to feel the pressure most often. Um, or we have the the Valsalva technique, where we actually this is why masks, for example, have a soft cover around the nose. You can hold your nose, and you can hold your mouth. So if you don't let air out of your mouth and you hold your nose, try to breathe out. What happens? You feel the pressure in your ear or your sinuses increase. So as you're diving down, and the pressure outside is increasing that can be something you might want to do to make sure you equalize that pressure when we talk about equalize early and often in diving that's what we're talking about you want to equalize that before the pressure starts to cause pain if you feel pain what do you think you might want to do if you feel pain any ideas stop doing that stop doing it you don't want to go deeper if you feel pain if you feel pain and you stop you think you might also want to go back up just a little bit? I think that might be a good idea. Could be a good idea. Yeah, that's a good thing to do. You want to stop, go up a little bit till the pain stops, equalize the pressure so it's, there's no more pain, and then continue back down once you feel comfortable. If the pain persists, you might want to end the dive because you don't want to cause tissue damage. Um, and pain is a good indication that something bad is happening. Now, quick question. Um, how deep are we certified to dive as open water divers when we finish this course? 130 feet. 130 feet. Are you sure about that? Ben, do you agree with that? Uh, isn't it like uh, 60 feet? 60 feet. Yes, that is the correct answer. You can go to 130 feet. And, and David, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I love going deeper than 60 and I would recommend uh, getting the deep dive certification, which will certify you at 130 feet. But open water divers are certified to go to um, 60 feet, and there's reasons for that. So um, that's basically keep in mind as we're diving, you don't want to go below the depth that you're certified to do. And you want to keep in mind that the, 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 uh, the, uh, most significant amount of pressure change will be in the first 33 feet or so of the dive. So the earlier part of the depth, um, and that's where we want to equalize. And that's where we want to, uh, we want to always uh, stop and, and make sure that we aren't experiencing pain. If we are experiencing pain, we want to, we want to um, stop, ascend, equalize early and often. Um, and stay comfortable. One other thing that can cause uh, problems or squeeze, as we talk about when we kind of talk about pressure, is the equipment. So masks, I've seen this happen, where a mask, if you don't equalize uh, the pressure in your mask, it can actually cause a pressure uh, damage to your, your eyes or your, your tissue around your eyes as well. Another reason to equalize before you feel any pain. All right, let's talk about the snorkel system real quick. So uh, everyone should have their masks, their snorkels, their fins. Um, lots to think about with the mask. You can get, for example, prescription masks. If you if you wear glasses, if you prefer that, if you would like to look into that, feel free to talk to us at the shop. Um, you want to, with snorkels, uh, the, the type of snorkel can matter. So this is an example for a snorkel that has a valve that can keep the water from entering the snorkel when you dive down. That can be a helpful thing. And we're going to practice using these things in the pool later. Um, so 
if you don't already have these already, you need to you need to pick them up. And what type of gear you use can uh, make a difference in your experience of diving. So uh, definitely feel free to ask questions and, and talk about that if you have any questions. Um, the exposure system. So uh, we have, uh, when we dive, uh, the temperature of the water is um, surprisingly, uh, it is not the same as when we're air. So like if we're at 80 degrees in your house, is that warm or cold generally? Pretty hot. Pretty hot, hot. yeah. <laughs> now in 80 degree water, that can actually be fairly warm at first as well. But if you're sitting in 80 degree water all day long for a dive, you're on a vacation in Hawaii or something like that, and you're diving in 80 degree water, surprisingly or not, you can start to feel a little cold because that's actually a good number of degrees cooler than our, your body. And so you will eventually start to feel that cold. So as we're thinking about getting into our diving journey and our experience, uh, thinking about an exposure system, a wetsuit uh, of the right size that that fits your what you're going to be diving um, is definitely something to think about. And I would recommend considering more than just the wetsuit, gloves, hoods, uh, boots, those things go a long ways towards the comfort of your dive and also like boots, not just for keeping your toes warm, but also for coming and going from the water. Like you'd be surprised how painful walking on rocks can be in your bare feet. Um, I, when I first started diving, I had a fin that didn't require boots. And I was glad when I, when I upgraded to fins that actually use the boots. All right. So last but not least, we're going to talk about how, uh, the, uh, how water affects how light travels through it. So we've already talked about how water is denser or heavier than air, and that affects how it, the pressure that it puts on our bodies, but it also affects how light travels through. Um, as you're diving, as you get down to, let's say 30 feet, so we're certified 60 feet as open water divers, but let's say you're down 30, 40 feet or so, what colors and I know I have it on the screen, so you can cheat. What colors are going to disappear at, after 30 feet? Well, it's looking like red and orange are going to be going. Well, red and orange, exactly. <laughs> You'd be surprised how uh, convenient a dive light can be in the middle of the day in the tropics, nice and sunny, you get down 30, 40, 50 feet underwater, and all of a sudden that dive light is lighting up the wildlife and you're seeing colors you never you never thought you that you didn't think were there until you turned your light on. Um, that's something to think about as we're diving. It can, uh, it, in some places, if you go deeper, you know, like uh, if we go to Ryrie for the, for the open water sessions, you'll notice that uh, there's those particulates and stuff in the water and you get down 30 feet, 30, 40 feet, we won't go that deep. But uh, if, if you do the deep water class, you, you would go that deep and you'll notice that it gets actually pretty dark. It, you know, most of the colors disappear because of the what's in the water. So um, uh, that has less to do with the water itself and more what's in the water. But it is something to think about as you are thinking about planning and approaching your dive. Uh, um, in a way that is not only safe, but also fun. I recommend, uh, this is the light that I got when I first started diving. It's fantastic. I love it. Um, I sell at the shop. I would recommend, uh, considering that if you are interested. And also, uh, I love night diving. When I first got to not let night, uh, go diving at night, I saw all kinds of stuff that you never see during the day. We saw, uh, uh the first night dive that I went on, we saw, couple turtles. We saw a shark. We didn't see any of those things during the next day of diving. Um, so you'd be surprised what comes out at night. And um, I would highly recommend uh, getting certified to dive at night if that sounds interesting to you. So just wrapping up, we've talked about uh, the, uh, the effects of pressure on an object as it increases and uh, how pressure on an object increases as it descends underwater. We've talked about how volume uh, in a flexible container decreases as it descends underwater. We've talked about calculating the pressure as it is exerted on a, a diver's body 
as we get deep, deeper. And we've talked about uh, the air spaces in the body. We've talked about all five of them and how, as we approach diving, uh, we want to think about adjusting for that pressure. And we've talked about uh, equalizing. Uh, as we go deeper, we want to make sure we, we're equalizing early and often. And we've talked about how light passes through water and how that affects the color. Uh, we want to remember, we want to understand the aquatic environment and how that it differs from what we're used to. And we want to anticipate and proactively react to that those differences even before we get in the water. Um, water's a lot heavier than air. It means more water, more pressure. Uh, in a soft compartment, air volume increases as pressure decreases and vice versa. We must anticipate, plan, and adjust to the changing pressure throughout the dive, equalize early and often. Any questions? If not, I'll stop there. Nicely done, Caleb. All right, let's move that and go back over here. Um, just finishing up my notes real quick here. Guys, what'd you think? How'd he do? From when okay, I nope. jumped it up. I'm, I'm sorry, was when that I Ivan? It, I thought, yeah, for when I jumped in, I thought it was pretty good. Um, ex explained everything pretty well. Uh, a little bit, uh, I was confused when you're talking about equalizing early and often, but only when you're above 30 feet. So hmm. you kind of had a, a segment there where you say it was most important above that. So I was wondering if I should continue equalizing as I go down, the way you put it. Yeah, I did not after make that very clear. I realized after the fact that I had <laughs> helped <to> use that point. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it was, everything was pretty, pretty well put out there and uh, good points and overall very solid. So. David, what do you think? Give me one second. So I was grabbing my evaluation off the printer. I do better on paper. Always good to write things down. That's a better way to keep track. So I definitely think you're, you did really good on asking questions to evaluate student knowledge, but less effective on motivation to participate. Mm -hmm. um, like you did call on people, but you didn't necessarily like excite them to answer so much as you did incite them to answer. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Other than that, I mean, your information was completed in a logical sequence. Uh, you did have uh, safe diving practices, promoted continuing education, dive travel, equipment sales and counseling. Uh, you didn't necessarily motivate to purchase so much as you mentioned that we could purchase. And then brings up the point about the light. I never knew what kind of light it was. I couldn't tell. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I so one and thing I like, this is the one that I use, but there were two lights on there. <laughs> and I was like, Oh yeah. Well, I, which one? I, that's a good point. So I didn't, I meant to put a picture of my actual light, but I don't have it with me. So I haven't taken that picture yet. So gotcha. I want to take a picture with that. Like one couple of things I'm going to be doing to this presentation is, swapping out some of the pictures for my own pictures like of me diving and i think that will increase some of the motivation side of it i just right. haven't done that yet um this is the first draft um and the light would be one of those gotcha and overall that, that would have been a pretty easy thing to fix as well i mean i just um i just went to google just now and and uh you know i i can uh type in you know the light and, and pull up a google picture of it so very rarely do I actually put uh, pictures of my gear that I've put in um, that uh, I, if I'm going to put gear, that's interesting. I, I just go to Google and get a really nice picture of it. And this is a light that I use. This crap loads. I mean, 
you use a big blue light. So, I mean, we, we all use big blue lights and, and uh, there's, I'm looking at it now, there's just so many. In fact, there's even some, I've got one here, a, a black, blue and a pink one on a stump. Um, so here's, here's one sitting on a waterfall. Why do they have it on a waterfall? That's weird. Anyway. Um, they, so it, it's easy to Google that kind of stuff. So I like the professional image of it. So perfect. Or David, I'm sorry. Were you, I didn't mean to hijack your uh, comments. Are you, are you, did you get it through everything? No, I think that was good. Okay. Perfect. Let's take so you in middle, so you didn't have a summary section, but that's just cause you stopped partway through a presentation. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's, uh, here's my notes. So, um, so one of the things that we talked about yesterday, you and I, um, was what do they need to know and when do they need to know it? And so as you temper this kind of idea, I want you to kind of think about the idea of practicality versus theory, right? There's the teaching aspect of it, but this is uh, preparing you for the actual portion of it. So how do we take out of theory, out of the basic idea and out of the book, and we turn that into something where somebody wants to learn it, where we're preparing a class so they can actually get ready to get in the water. So um, that's one of the things that we're, we're really looking at. So how do we take this standard, this introduction, um, the diver diamond, the knowledge understanding, the yada, 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 right? All the crap. How do we take that and put it into a way that um, you as a diver would want to learn it? So here's some here's the key points that I, I notice is uh, a personal introduction. Uh, remember, this is a new class. They don't know you. Why do I want to know you? Who who are you and why are you standing in front of us? Right. Hmm. Um, I, I, I always kind of think back to the uh, um, catch me if you can, kid. You know, he stood up for the class. I'm the instructor. Well, oh, oh, you know, right. You know, we got to. We gotta know who you are and why are you here, right? And and he does a good job of that. He's like, I'm the instructor, and and you will address to me as Mr. Uh, Abagnale, right? And, and he, he gets that clear, you know. But you have to set that tone from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Richard Hatfield. I'm a tech, I'm an open water instructor today, and I'm going to be teaching you. Uh, I love to dive. I, I da, 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 da. you know, so personal. Make it personal because what we're doing is a very, very, very personal thing, right? We're taking lives into our hands. Um, more so than any other way, and, and we're we're asking them for their trust. But who the hell are we? So as you go through this, you know, give them a reason why they want to listen to you, and and uh, why you'd be interesting. Why you're why are you the instructor? Right? And just hmm. are you some random guy that walked up off the street, Caleb? Okay, cool. Well, you know, so start off with that. I think it's hugely important to build trust. I'm here because this. My favorite dive sites are this. I like to do this, um, and so. I think you'll notice in every uh, presentation I give, especially open water, um, I started off with a per I started off with a personal introduction, and then I, I talk a little bit about my diving, so they they get to learn a little bit more about why I do this, what I do. So I do that on night one, two, three, and four, right? Um, just to reiterate and give them, and I try and come up with a different story. I'm not always successful on that, but uh, mm -hmm. and then the second part is is who are they? Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. My dad used to say that. So as you kind of go through these, these building, this information, this class, get into the idea. Great. Um, Caleb, what, thanks for coming to the class. Tell me about um, why are you learning to dive? And I know you've heard me say this and, okay. and uh, at the beginning of it. Now, guys, as we go through this, I want you to think about what kind of diving do you want to accomplish? Um, okay. I know you all want to go see pretty fish, but there's so much more to this than that. You can see wrecks and you can see caves and you can see okay. da, 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 da. Caleb, why do you want to dive? And then actually listen. Uh, my dad used to say, don't ask me how I am unless you're prepared to sit down and listen to the answer. Right. Um, so and I try and try and go through that process of um, why do they want to listen to you? And, and well, this is exciting for me because this is very personal to them, right? Mm -hmm. There you get a you know, get the appetite wet with your kind of diving, and then you can talk, ask about what they and maybe they match up, sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Um, it's pretty hard. I love all diving, so it's hard for them not to match up with something I love. But find out that, that that personal introduction and that class intro. So, again, uh, I just want to reiterate that the idea of this is we've done everything very academically to this point. Sure. And absolutely, we're checking boxes um, with that. But practicality versus theory, reality versus the book. And so as you go through this, I want you to um, start personalizing these in a way that it becomes interesting, right? Because you and I both know that uh, – um, uh, philosophy from the book in college class is boring as hell, 
-hmm. It's not until you really get into the motivations of the whys and the who's and the what's and how I can apply this. That's where re philosophy really gets interesting. How does this, you know, uh, apply to our, us today? You know, we'd had our, our talk yesterday about Ayn Rand, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Her theory was, uh, the theories of what she's talking about are very boring until you start putting in the application of a story. And then it's like, oh, I see how it applies. So think about that. Make, make it more personal and, and bring it add to that. Um, you brought sales in way too early, in, in my opinion. Um, you started yep. talking in the, it was in the first two minutes. And as you go back and watch this recording, watch how fast you brought sales in. Mm -hmm. So if you walk onto, and I use automotive because I'm in the automotive space, but if you walk onto a car lot um, and uh, I say, hey, look at this Honda Accord, you should buy this one right now. Too soon. Way too soon. Um, yeah. And because automatically the first thing you think out of any salesman's mouth is that they're lying to you, right? You can right. tell a car salesman's lying because his lips are moving, right? Um, well, there's a point, and I'm sure you have to have purchased a car from a dealership at some point where you actually end up liking the salesman, right? You you learned a little bit about them. They told you about their mom or their um, their dad, their uncle, their car, their their dog, whatever it was. Something created a relationship with them and made you say, okay, I trust you enough that I'll buy this car. The same thing with this. This is life-saving equipment. I need to trust you. Why are you suggesting this to me? Hmm. Why? How does this apply? And the second part of that is not just do I trust you, but why do I want this? I mean, yeah, I buy this from a local store. I can get it from Amazon. Why do I want to buy it from you? I, and do I really need all this crap? Can't I just rent it wherever I'm at? What's the what's in it for me? Why do I need it? What's mm -hmm. what's the motivation? So be careful when you introduce sales. Um, build a relationship with them first throughout the process. And then you go, you come to the point, hey, and you know, when you guys get ready to come out and, and go out and dive in the Caribbean, it'd be really sweet. If you had your own BC, it's a more comfortable dive because sure. it'll be weighted to you, balanced to you. And man, when you're going down to see these pretty fish and being able to be balanced over top of that reef with your own weighting system that you've dialed into you, now there's a need, right? I've, sure. I've figured out a way to say, hey, this is what you, uh, what I have. This is where you'd use it, and this is why you'd use it. You start putting, getting to that. You know, we've all seen science in it. Get to the why. Why yeah. is this important, right? And so, get to that relationship. So, the first thing, three things I brought up was personal introduction. That's re building relationship. Class introduction. It's building relationship. And mm -hmm. number three is uh, when to introduce sales. It's building relationship. So, I really want to impart on you that a lot of what we do in terms of teaching open water diving, uh, any class. Um, think about how you and I interact, all right? Yeah. It's, um, you know about my family. I know about your family. You know, we we went to have dinner. We have a relationship, you know? So when I when I make suggestions to you, you're like, oh, okay. It's not that he just, he's trying to make sales. He doesn't really care about sales. He's just trying to, he's looking after me. Right. So relationship, relationship, relationship. And the more you can interject that relationship, and David brought up an excellent point. There's, there was a lot of, questioning but it wasn't it was what how did you put that david in terms of he was his questions i liked how you put that unmute yourself you you're still muted there you go i know every time i touch it it would double tap instead of single um no i i said you you don't necessarily excite them to answer so much as you incite them to answer exactly that's they, really well put. <laughs> incited, they were incited answers, not um, because I, I wasn't excited. Where do you, you know, Caleb, I tell you, where's the next place you want to dive? Right. Tell me about that. Yeah. Right. That excites you. You're like, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, David, where's you, where are you going to go diving at next? I'm going to Fiji. Really? Whoa. Ivan, where are you going diving next? I'm going to Ryrie. Woo. Right. <laughs> so, you know, Again, relationship, relationship, relationship. So make sure you associate it with a need, not just a, a thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I if I told you that um, you're putting um, ro running boards on your um, Subaru, mm -hmm. you should put hey, Caleb, you should put running boards on your Subaru. You'd be like, why? Why the <laughs> hell do I need running boards? Hey, Caleb, did you know if you put these special running boards on, you'll get another five miles to the gallon on your uh, because it makes your car more efficient, uh, fuel efficient. I don't believe you. <laughs> and uh, uh, no, it's proven. It's it's it's, it's it, and uh, it also uh, makes sure protect 
um, the paint on your car. Uh, so as you're going through big puddles and snow, because we get a lot of snow out here. So it's going to protect it. And it's actually going to add value to your vehicle. So we go through that. You know, you get those yeah. ideas of here's yeah. why you need it. And here's where you'd use it. And here's the value to you. So everything about sales is about building value. Okay. Um, and in fact, everything in life is about value. And think about it like this. Have you ever um, sat on the couch watching a, uh, a mediocre television show and, and the remote was across the room, but so you didn't change the channel? Mm. It was just a, enough um, of a pain in the ass to get off the couch. There wasn't enough value in it for you to get off your, off your keister and go get the remote to change it. But <laughs> if it had been a really bad show, you'd be like, Okay, now there's a value because this is a really bad show. It's sucking my life. I'll get up, right? <laughs> Everything in life is value. So the more you can get into actual value, the better off you're going to be. So um, the other thing we talked about yesterday is, again, what do they need to know and when do they need to know it? When do they need to know it? Yep. So what are we going to be doing on uh, night one in the pool? Assembling our gear for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, do... Well, I guess it's been several different ways. Uh, mass drills, if there's time, uh, it'll, it'll start with the snorkel stuff. So mm -hmm. snorkel skills, uh, stride, giant stride entry, et cetera. So the, the entries, exits, um, and snorkeling, uh, swimming assessment, and then mass drills and, and uh, um, regular drills if there's time. Okay. How much did we talk about snorkeling tonight? Um, not enough. Not enough. How much did we talk about? A did we actually even bring up a snorkel? I did, but only not very long. Um, how about um, a mask? Did we talk about the nomenclature of a mask? The nomenclature of a mask? No. Like, why does it have nose wells? Uh, finger wells. Oh, I, I mentioned that in the clearing section, but it wasn't well connected to snorkeling. It wasn't. Yeah, exactly. So we want to make sure I, I get very clearly that the book puts it in this order. But mm -hmm. wouldn't it be better if we started out with, OK, here's the gear. Uh, we're going to start with the mask. The mask is super important. We're going to be using this and it has three key characteristics. It has tempered glass. So we don't want to get our, our mask from Walmart. We want to get an actual good scuba quality mask. Does it not tempered glass? Because do you really want the glass to shatter while you're diving? Right. No, that'd be bad. It has scuba quality silicone, so it makes a good seal. You all we've all had that three dollar mask from Walmart. We got down and just filled up with water. That sucks, right? Well, right. an actual scuba mask has a double seal and good scuba quality silicone around it. And here's now here's the key thing you need to understand about a scuba mask. It has nose wells. So I can take my fingers in there and I can pinch my nose and I can equalize. Now let's talk a little bit about equalizing. Now, don't you think that might be important underwater that you, this is a pain-free sport? Yes. Absolutely. See? <laughs> now, um, now, along those lines, just be aware here at Idaho Dive Pirates, we're very proud to tell you that we have 12 different types of masks. And, and uh, the most important piece of a mask is the fit, not the price. Um, I've got some great masks that I paid 60 bucks for that I love. And I've got a $250 mask that I, I absolutely hate. Um, it's the worst mask ever. I'd be happy to sell it to you for half price, right? Just, just joking along, but you know, yeah. um, but as we got to go through this, we're going to be doing a lot with this here in, in about an hour, we're going to be in the water and, and this is going to be some pretty life-saving important stuff. So we want to make sure we're focusing heavily on that. And then here's how it applies. Once we're underwater, we talked about this ear thing. Um, you know, here's why it applies because uh, Boyle's law, uh, because because of this, because of the pressure, because of the variance. And once we're underwater, did you know light has a frequency and a wavelength and it, it does this? So think about the order in which you present. Academically, I get the book goes exactly like you said. Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely get that. But in practicality versus theory, would it be better if we started a little bit more at ground level of, this is a mask. This is a snorkel. These are fins. You know, the fins are great. And you want to, there's a lot of different styles of this. They do two things for you. They uh, minimize effort, maximize propulsion. They're huge. You know, so as we, as you kind of go through this, I want to think, I want you to think about the practicality of it versus the theory of it. Okay. You and I both know that um, I could probably um, figure out how to, to write that code stuff that you do. 
Um, and in theory, it would look good. But how many times have you had a theoretical code versus a real world code One uh, be very different? <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time, right? So what happens in the real world what versus what happens on paper are mm -hmm. oftentimes very, very different. So as you go through your presentations, make sure we're thinking about how does this actually apply? And, and again, I just, I can't stress this enough. What do they need to know? Mm -hmm. And when do they need to know it? When do they need to know it? Um, you've got free reign at this point that um, I'm not saying, okay, section one of chapter one, we're going to go over that. And I want you to give me a, a defined objective with a explained to value and an overview of main points. Through that, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to judge you on your practical application of knowledge, equipment, sales, account, or motivation to purchase and promote continued edu education. Okay. I'm not good at, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's this, at this point, it's chapter one. Give me what I need to know in this format that's practical to the student so that I want to learn it and it makes sense to me as a student. Because, um, okay. well, at this point, you're experienced cyber. I mean, you've been through some theory. Um, you've been through some science. Um, you're, you've um, done great on your dive guide stuff. You can lead divers. So you've got a lot more knowledge. Remember, this is kindergarten, right? We're, um, I've just now gotten you to fifth grade in, in the, in the uh, grand scheme of diving, you're, you're in fifth grade, but the problem right. is, is you're trying to explain fifth grade concepts to kindergartners. Right. 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 So let's kind of slow that down and back it up. And that's what well, problem I have. Let but, me ask you then. Um, yeah. so it, it, it would probably be better if I flipped what I basically did in the order. So I, I started with, let's just start with mass. Well, and first going back to the introduction. So I took the notes. You said, we need to start with a good introduction myself. Let's introduce ourselves to them. Let's have them introduce, especially for in person. Yeah. Well, what's your name? What's your interest? Why are you diving? So that there should mm -hmm. definitely be a good amount of time spent on that at the very beginning. Um, I didn't do any of that. So that's, that's really good feedback. Um, and including like finding out why, what's interesting to them. Why, what do they want to get out? I remember you asked that of me on our first, like, what do you want from me as the instructor, you know, <laughs> student, what do you want from me? So that's a good question to ask. I've got those notes there. And then once we're done with all the intros and we've really kind of gotten ice broken and we're off to a good start there, then start it. Like, we're going to talk about the scuba system first. Let's just start, or sorry, the, the snorkel system, because we're going to be doing that later tonight and maybe refer to that. So it, so does that, is that a good order in your mind? Let's go to the mass, the snorkel, the fins. Absolutely. About that first. Okay. And yeah, get then, into that because that leads, if you get through the mask and snorkel, now we're starting to get in, into the underwater environment. Now yeah. we can apply, okay, here's why we have this. Did you know there's air inside the mask? There's air inside your ears. That as you're wearing yep. this, you're going to need to clear your ears because pressure. And yep. as we start getting down there, we're going to start losing light. We need a light. Um, this might be a little easy, a little early to bring up something like a light. Mm -hmm. Um as I tried for one, so I brought it in, but I do agree it's a little early. <laughs> yeah. And so um, the way I kind of look at it is I, um, as I teach well, this, I, go ahead. How about this? Because because if I was doing these first two sections all in one night, I could go mass snorkel fins and use the mask as that jumping off point to say, let's pause and talk about the pressure, the effects of pressure in the water mm -hmm. and talk a little bit about that, but stay light on it the first night. Don't have to go yeah. super deep. Probably went a little bit too deep tonight. Um, and then keep going. I don't think through. you didn't go too deep. You just went too early. Okay. Too early. Okay. So then use the mask to jump off for that and then keep going through the total, um, the, uh, the total dive system. So the next is the exposure system. We can talk about heat. We can mm -hmm. talk about delivery what, system. What would, um, one of the bigger concerns they might have and start as we start getting into this, um, right now they're not thinking, they're just thinking I'm going to be putting a backpack on my freaking back. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm, I might go into the BC first. Okay. okay. Here's the BC. Here's the regulator. Um, okay. cause think about how they're, they're processing this and what their first mm -hmm. thoughts are. Their first okay. thoughts are during diving are not wearing a wetsuit. Right. Right. It's okay. I'm That's putting a mask point. on the biggest thing. The scary thing is this big thing. They're going to be put on the back. And I can tell you that one of the, the uh, big objections, and I think mm -hmm. Ivan would, uh, uh, if Ivan's still listening, um, I think one of the things Ivan would agree in, in classes is one of the biggest fears and common th threads as you'll hear is I'm scared that I'm going to put the gear together wrong. Mm. You know, I, I want to, I'm, I'm afraid because it, it looks complicated. It's scary, right? All of a sudden putting this thing, this, this octopus on, oh my gosh, it's got all these hoses, <laughs> you know, so they're scared about that. So right. we try and get through the, uh, addressing the things in the order of what they think. And then after we get okay. through that and, 
hey, by the way, did you know that uh, water wicks body uh, heat away 25 times faster than air? Yeah, hmm. that's kind of a scary thing. Did you know you can get hypothermia in the Mediterranean at, at 85 degrees? Oh, yeah. So one of the things we always encourage is a wetsuit. Now, I, I push wetsuits a little heavier. There's a safety device as well because it has flotation. I don't think anybody should be diving without a wetsuit, right? Mm -hmm. But And I throw that in. It's a nice safety message. By the way, just so you know, if something ever happened, you had a catastrophic failure, if you can get that gear off in your wetsuit, you're going to float very easily. It's great. So there's a safety message. So as you go through this, um, we, we're thinking of the big picture of what do they need to know? When do they need to know it? Okay. And I always apply art, um, A-R-T, actual experience. Mm -hmm. Now, here's here's the thing for me in masks. I da-da-da-da-da, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, I, and I've had a mask break or whatever. You know, I, you, mm -hmm. actual experience of diving. Um, just a few months ago, Nikki and I were in Hawaii and diving. It was amazing. Just beautiful plate coral, right? Or whatever. Um, then, uh, and at some point during that process, we ex uh, as we're explaining this, we say, okay, you know, I've got um, masks are awesome. And here's how we fit them. You put them on your face and you you, you suck in slightly. And if it sticks, it's great. So, mm -hmm. um, man, there's a couple of different kinds of masks. You can have clear skirted masks or solid skirted masks. And what's, you know, da, da, da. And just so you know, here at the uh, shop, we have both. My preference is a clear skirted mask um, in uh, dark darker waters mm -hmm. or in lighter waters and uh, a clear skirted mask in, in darker situations. And here's why. So... Mm -hmm. Um, and I'd love to get you fitted on that. A neoprene strap is another great thing, you know. So mm -hmm. retail opportunity based upon actual experience because here's why, right? Gotcha. And yep. then finally, um, deeper into your presentation. Now, if, you, if you're really interested in, in this kind of stuff we um, and seeing pretty um, – in this night one, what do you think a, a good um, training opportunity for them will be? Is it really night diving? Um, because are they ready for night diving right uh, tonight, uh, or they even thought no, about that? No, yeah, no. Based upon the lecture, I'm just going based upon tonight's lecture. Right? Yeah, I, um, I put it in there because we were talking about the effects of light and night and diving, and so I, I was like, I'll oh, throw in. No, that's, that's, but, but it's that's good. That, right. That's, that's good segue. Right. But is there a better uh, specialty um, yeah. that that uh, that that might be interesting to them? Um, I'm trying to think at this stage of the game, the equipment technique specialty, the one that teaches them more about how to care for their equipment and everything. Yeah, hey, hey, absolutely. That's a good one. If so, guys, if you're really super interested in, and as you guys move along and start getting your own gear, we do teach equipment specialty where as you get your own gear, we'll teach you how to use that. Um, okay. if you buy your own dive computer, we have a dive computer class for you. Um, if you're just out to see pretty fish, you want to know more about that. We do have ecology specialties as well. We have fish uh, ecology, mm -hmm. invertebrates, coral identification, fish identification, shark, mm -hmm. shark uh, um, uh, knowledge uh, uh, specialty, and it's amazing. So we can certainly help you with that as well. Um, if you're, you know, you get somebody out to say, I, I, I want to take pictures of pretty fish. Hey, by the way, did you know we have a photo and video course? We can help you with that and help you understand. So. You know, kind of tailored a little bit more to their level. Night and biz, limited biz is a good one to bring up in open water, but maybe not night not one. Night one, yeah. Okay. What about? So I think I definitely did it way too early in the in the class. But if it was towards the end and we were talking about like how deep can you go as an open water diver, and they're saying, "Oh, we can go to 100 feet," right? No, 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 that's deep water. If you want to go that deep, you can. Is that? Would yeah. you agree that's a good thing to bring up? If it yeah, you can absolutely. Point? We want to make sure we're setting the thresholds of here's what yeah. you can do and here's where you can do it. Now, just so you guys know, if you are interested in, in going past the 60 to limit, 60 uh, foot limit that we're setting in this course. We absolutely have a fantastic course for that. I get you to all the way to 130 feet. It's amazing. I love the deep stuff. I, you know, da 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 da, da. and that's a good place to bring that up. Okay, it, but make sure you. It's you know, kind of like segueing into the right thing, right? Yeah. It's the two have to go. If we're gonna, you know, sell tires, then we can sell rims. But we don't generally sell rims and then tires, or right. or, or uh, sell the rims first and then. Oh, hey, by the way, tires. You know, we try and put it yeah. together. Hey, we need some new tires. Hey, but I want some rims on there as well. That'd be cool. You know, you, or I don't know, think, think about how the, you yeah. know, uh, peanut butter and jelly, right. Is kind of yeah. what we're looking for. 
Um, we don't think a lot of that, times of peanut butter and Oreos, right? And that goes back to a good intro where you would get to know your students because like my first night on night one of open water, I, I definitely wanted to know how, how deep can I get certified to go as fast as possible? But that was me. I was mm -hmm. eager for a lot early on and other divers may not be ready for that. That might be just too overwhelming to think about that. So get to know your divers before you start the class. Yep, absolutely. And that's that's a great thing to know. And, and what you'll find out, I mean, like, think about the, the science that I have in class we did. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think Wilson would, would agree that the last science that I have in class was a lot more in depth than the, the one we did before mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But at the beginning of it, we knew the students. I knew who we were talking to. And I knew that the basic science that I have in class um, were was going to not be what they, I, I think you guys would have got bored. You'd be like, Really, Benjamin, you're teaching me third grade math. Seriously, I'm. I want some algebra here, man. Give well, especially since you had just taught us science diving in the open water class. <laughs> so, you guys, you guys needed more. You needed a yeah. much bigger class, and so that's it's about yeah. knowing your audience, right? Yeah. And that's going to be through personal introduction, personal pref, uh, uh, personal introductions from the class, and knowing what you know, I had a, some, a, a young lady in, in uh, night one tell me that she, her whole goal was to get into cave diving. And I'm like, absolutely. Let's, let me tell you about side mount, <laughs> right? <laughs> absolutely. If you're, this, this is your plan. Here's what that looks like. And you can start guiding that. But once you understand, and that's why I bring it up in class one, I'm like, as you guys go through this process, I want you to, to think about mm -hmm. um, where you want to take your diving career. Mm -hmm. What does that look like, right? Do you want to see wrecks? Do you want to see, what do you, what do you want to see? Um, what do you want to do? You want deep stuff? Great, we can do that. Do you want uh, wrecks? We can do that. You want caves? We can do that. What do you, what do you yeah. want out of this, right? I want three-hour dives in open water, but we can do that. I've got, I'm an older guy that's a vet with bad back. We can do that, right? But mm. as we kind of go through this process, we start getting the idea of, where do you want to go? And it's about learning your students. And that's why I asked that right. question at the beginning of it. And I bring up all the specialties, by the way. And, and it's not that I talk about the specialties in the open water uh, right. in, in night one. I just say, where do you want to go? And just so you know, here's all the places you can go. And I, mm -hmm. I've got them all listed out there. And it's not that I'm trying to overwhelm them. I just want them to realize there's no limit. I, mm -hmm. I can teach 36 the specialties. Not the end of a journey. Yeah, exactly. And, and so you know, it gives them the idea that, wait a minute, look, Benjamin can teach me 36 specialties and, and five different types of tech classes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we're at the right place, right? <laughs> um, whatever I, I'm wanting to do, I think he, uh, um, he's there. So let's see. I, nice. I think I was trying to come back in. Um, let's see. Um, Ivan says, I think, uh, you made some excellent points about the structure. I was, uh, jumping in and out, uh, for the first bit. So I missed some, uh, whenever discussing deep to new students, I like to discuss, uh, why we don't go past 60 feet for open water. So I think that's a great point. Ivan brought up. Oh, there's Ivan. Mm -hmm. I, I'll add it back to yeah. the stage. And, and then when uh, you were said, oh, you're like, there are reasons for that. And then you, that would have been an awesome time to sell higher education. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you when said, I said this oh, we have a deep yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, you were like, exactly. we have a deep class and then you can go to 130 feet, but you're only certified to 60. And there are reasons for that. And then just. Oh, yeah. Them. And then I, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I just left it. There. You like, so didn't we'll give any of the reasons you didn't like yeah. hint at nitrogen yeah, narcosis. Point. I think he did a good job. I mean, first time out the gate, that's this is what I expected. But um, I, I want to make sure to go through that. Now, Ivan's taught as an actual instructor as well. And. And I trust Ivan uh, completely. What Ivan, any other thoughts? Overall, I, I, I thought it was really good. Like you said, his uh, the, the structure of it and how you guys are going about teaching your first night and all that definitely uh, takes a little bit of uh, reorganization. Uh, but that's all just practicing and practicing what you're what you're saying and uh, putting out there to your students. Um, getting to know your students always really important. Uh, especially where they're at with their skills. Some might be already uh, avid snorkelers. Uh, some mm -hmm. might have never put on a fence. So there's mm -hmm. going to be a big difference there. Um, and uh, I, I'm not sure how, how late I jumped in the game, but I was jump. I was right in for part of physics and I kind of fell out. Uh, uh, if you started out with physics, which I'm not sure if you did or not, but that's always a rough one. 
starting in physics early on, it just kind of mm -hmm. throws people for a, a loop. <laughs> so, I, I did start into that pretty quickly, and I think it was definitely okay. too soon. Okay. So, yeah, de definitely putting that off a, a, a few more segments is, in my mind, more ideal. And uh, like Benjamin said, getting to know them, why they're there, um, really trying to get more information from them so you can really direct your class uh, in a more meaningful way towards each individual that you're instructing. Hmm. So there's... Everybody, everybody is there for slightly different reasons. I mean, everybody wants to get in the water and breathe underwater, but how they got there is definitely going to be different. So, There are a lot of students who only get dragged along because one of their friends or their boyfriend or their girlfriend or... Or absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And those ones you might want to end up separating for, <laughs> from being buddies. <laughs> Yeah. And, and that's one of the things on, on kind of a practicality note, this is a little bit more advanced idea, but I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but it's not uncommon for me to separate a mother and a son um, or a husband and wife, um, especially kids from their parents is one of my big ones that I'll, I'll break the kids out because the kids are learning differently than the parents. And sometimes the parents are behind. I've, I have had the kids uh, in the class that were, I mean, they just, they got it right. And, and the mom was like, oh my God, I'm going to die. Right. Kind of deal. Um, and so I like to separate them out so they can become their own individual person and I'll partner them up with somebody else where they have to stand on their own and I'm able to teach them because they'll, and they'll pay attention to me instead of trying to save their kid or the kid feeling responsible for the parent. I mean, um, absolutely. So kind of be aware of that. It's, um, I like to break up buddies, um, that are like that, especially parents and kids, um, is a big one, but boyfriends and girlfriends, it, it's hit or miss. It depends. Um, but Ivan brings up a great point. Keep an eye on, on the class, but you won't know that unless you talk to them. Make sure, uh, make sure you're, you're pulling them out. And that's, that kind of brings on my next point is um, as you kind of go through this, one of the, one of the most important things I've, I have learned in uh, sales um, overall in, the, in however long and, and in my, my previous career prior to moving into sales uh, in the military was – as you're drawing information out and, and getting ready to build a plan to do something, which are the more solid plans? If you're trying, if your wife comes up with an idea, how invested is she in that idea? If she wants to do whatever, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but if you come up with an idea and you, you sell her on it, how invested is she in the plan? Less invested, less invested. So one of the secrets to teaching this is the interactive session. So you might come up and, and, and start getting them to figure out things on their own and coming up with their own yeah. ideas. So, for example, if I had a, a mask or, um, you know, it's just, you know, so one of the things I always like to dive with, Caleb, is a light. What do you think, hmm. Caleb, what do you think a light might be important? So I can see things. Absolutely. Did, um, what about color? Have you, have you ever um, heard the idea that color gets lost as you go deeper? I have not. I just, this is new to me. <laughs> so Absolutely. tell me more. <laughs> so how important would it be to see the cool colors of all the fish? I, that's why I'm diving. That's literally why I'm diving. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you got down to 60 feet and all the fish were blue, even though you, you know they should have been yellow or green or orange, would that have been a problem? That I'm glad you tell me that now. Maybe I should get a light now instead of waiting until after my Fiji trip. <laughs> Absolutely. So as you go through this, that's why I carry a light, uh, Caleb, is exactly because I, I have gotten to the point where I've seen that fish that looked blue as I was chasing them along, that I kicked the light on them, and it turned out they were red or yellow or green. Hmm. So try and draw the information. Into that conversation and get them to, yeah. And, and start drawing that information, but get them to try and start drawing conclusions. Because if you can get them to start drawing conclusions and coming up with answers on their own or ideas on their own, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times you'll start finding out what their knowledge is. Now, if you popped up and says, oh, yeah, I know about wavelength and spectrum. Absolutely. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have had to explain it as much. But now mm -hmm. I know you don't understand wavelength and spectrum. So I need to explain that out. So mm -hmm. through that process, I learned what you knew. Mm -hmm. But I got you to start thinking about the ideas and pulling them out. Mm -hmm. And then I also, did you picture yourself diving and seeing fish? Uh, yeah, it popped in my brain as you were asking those questions. Absolutely. So I got you to visualize it in an emotional way. Yeah. Um, so the more I can draw you out to get you visualizing things, seeing, feeling, tasting it in your own head, 
mm-hmm. coming up with the answers on your own um, so that you're you're realizing this. I'm evaluating your knowledge, but I'm also getting you thinking about the process, mm-hmm. but I'm also seeing what you don't know. So I'm, I'm learning a lot more. I'm learning more from you than you are from me at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's good. Um, you, you want that throughout the class. So it's an interactive class session really needs to be mm-hmm. drawing the information out, getting those students to uh, come up with the answers on their own through cognitive reasoning. You know, it, it, they may not know the answer directly. You know, you may say, hey, what's 3x plus 2? Uh, you know, they they might, uh, you know, they might not know. But right. if I say, okay, 3x plus 2 equals 6. Now, what do you think x might mean, right? I, and I'm just using this kind of uh, theoretically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so how do you think we might come up with that? If x plus 1 equals 2. What do you think X might equal? So if we had one already and we had a two and we know X is something else that creates one and a two, what, what do you think X might be? Hmm. And so if you can get them to draw out and, and get them to come up with the answer on their own, you've okay. won, okay. right? Cause it's their idea. They, they have dialed in and got a, a better idea of what they can get out of this class because hmm. now they understand it, right? Because they've had to figure it out on their own. I would be willing to bet that the pieces of your job and Wilson's job and Ivan's job, the ones you understand the best or have had the deepest resonance. So some of the ones you've had to figure out, you've had to use right. a creative process to figure out, okay, how does this piece and this piece go together? And you yeah. may have read it in the book somewhere, but when you've had to figure it out and actually have to put two to, the two together and, oh, right. Yeah. So what I, Good. sorry. Good. Did I cut someone off? Um, nope. what, so what I feel like I'm hearing here. So like, as I was going through these slides and just trying to get my, like this is the first time I've gone through this and I'm like, okay, I gotta, I haven't touched some of this material since open water. So I'm like trying to memorize all these facts and everything. It's one thing to know, to be able to, to regurgitate the information and even to be able to throw it in a, in a form of a question from time to time. That's basically what I did tonight. Not even perfectly, quite frankly. Uh, but the next level, what you're what you're saying is I need to get to the point where the, the information is second nature. Now it's a conversation. We're having a conversation and I'm drawing them through that journey without trying to just regurgitate information in a sequence that I memorized at some point. I'm actually trying to take them through the information in a guided fashion. Is that mm-hmm. kind of one way of putting what you're saying? That's one way. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's part of it. Right? Absolutely. Okay. It is knowing the information, but getting bullying the information out of them and um it's certainly not regurgitating so the easiest way to think about this is as we go through this you set yourself an outline of 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 reality right i'm trying to accomplish a b and c i'm trying to get them to understand the mask is going to be important i i prioritize my information the snorkel is going to be important the you know i i've Hmm. outlined tonight we're going to right and then i start uh drawing upon my own experience and so as we go through this, you know, I, I, I understand completely that you want to be in any caves, uh, Caleb. Now, one of the things I love to do is I, I dive a lot of side mountain. There, there's a couple of reasons for that um, because I'm able to take tanks off. I'm safer. I'm able to squeeze through things. Uh, I like it better like that. And so why do you think it'd be important in a cave to be able to take a, your left and right tank off, Caleb? For maneuvering and, and adjusting to the environment. Absolutely. What do you mean by maneuvering, adjusting through the environment? you getting through small spaces like you mentioned or uh <laughs> thumbs up or yeah. or uh or maneuvering around something that is is a certain you know a corner or something like that yeah are there every time you ever seen a, a rabbit hole in a cave i have not yet but i hope to soon yeah they, well the caves get pretty small so if i had a big old thing on my back would i be able to squeeze right through that no and no, and no. no option to adjust yeah so that's why we like side because i can take things off i can put them through first and then i can squeeze through after right mm-hmm. but now i've got you thinking about it you you see the cave in your mind but you've you've come up and understood the solution i've got to be able to maneuver better mm-hmm. right i didn't have to tell you that you came up with that on your own and you mentioned safety but you didn't expand on it but i can easily imagine like oh yeah if i had an issue i can access my gear much easier than if it's on my back where i can't yeah. access it now i can deal with the emergency a lot more effective safer now apply that to open water with mm-hmm. and with your own here's the good news is it's your experience level you've done a lot of dives at this mm-hmm. point right mm-hmm. and it's certainly not a ton of dives i mean yes i've I have more dives than all of you guys, right? Combined, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. 
you by comparison from you to me, you to them is the same, right? Mm -hmm. You've got your 70, 70 plus dives, 80 plus dives, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You are now a resident expert because you've got actual open water dives and cold mm -hmm. water and warm water and bright um, and night and deep and, uh, and extra tanks. And so now you are, you are now the, the expert because you've done something they haven't done. Mm -hmm. Apply what you know. One of the biggest complaints I, I, I get from uh, Wilson and, and uh, uh, Josh was when they use my PowerPoint presentation, it's got these pictures of me diving and different stuff like that. And, and they like to make up their own little stories about it, uh, about the, the picture, but they've, or they'll just regurgitate my stories. But as they go off and do their own thing, they need to put their own pictures in the, in so they can tell about their diving journey. Right. Because that's, that's what it's going to be. I, I need something to relate to you. You can certainly, give me basic information, but I need to be able to relate to you. Um, here, here's what I did. Now, why do you think that's important? And then draw the answer out. So it's huge. It's, it's called interactive learning. And the more it, it creates a larger conversation and you've got to have noticed this through a lot of the classes we have. Yep. I ask a lot of questions and I, and I, I, um, I try and draw information out of my students and I do that more and more and more. Right. This is why. And the, and the reason I bring this up, is this is where SSI wants to go to interactive learning sessions. Now, how does this benefit you, Wilson, and uh, uh, Kayla, or all you guys that are getting ready to go through an ITC? Why do you think it might be important to understand this theory and the academic presentation? Because foundations are foundations. It doesn't matter how high up you get, you still need to be able to build upon the entry level. Absolutely. So, if you're going in front of an evaluator and you use the format and you use an interactive learning session in the format, is he going to tend to score you higher? I would hope so. Absolutely. Um, he's going to have um, less concern about you going out and doing your own thing because you're doing it the way they want it done. You're, mm -hmm. you're building upon what SSI is asking you to do with interactive learning um, and you're engaging the class. You're going to make sure that you're using, uh, you're motivating the class to participate because they're coming up with their own answers. You're mm -hmm. through that ac active learning. You're also asking questions to evaluate students' knowledge, but more accurately, you're getting them to tell you what they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, you know, we got through that process. Did you know light? No. Okay. I just evaluated your knowledge. I just got a perfect score mm -hmm. on that, by the way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting that, that actual, proving that I can, not only do I understand this academically and, and theoretically, but I, I understand this practically and in real world application. Hmm. It will do wonders for you when you go through your evaluation. If you can uh, take this and apply it with an active learning session at the same time and make sure, and by the way, you did great on time, by the way. Um, so those are yes. the things I would, I, I, I really want you to focus on. Um, if yes. you want, I, I wrote this down. I'm, I'm going to uh, text it over to you real yeah, quickly. Text me it. Yeah, that'd be perfect. I took notes of your feedback, but. Um, what I'll do, yeah. I'm just going to, hopefully you can read cursive. Let's see. I'll figure it out. There we go. I just took a, a, a quick photo of my notes section. And I texted it to you as well, but that's what, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and, and that's what's going to get you through an open water class. Um, and not that, I mean, these aren't juvenile delinquents that you're teaching. Um, they're, uh, they're going to be very gentle on you, but you know, we want to make sure we get them as involved as humanly possible so that they're taking knowledge away. I always figure if I can get them to remember 20% of what I've taught them, I've done a really, really good job. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for 20%, but when you make it, too academic, um, if you get them to retain 4% of it, you'll be lucky. If you make it right. real world, you're going to get to that higher 20 to 30% retention. This is like drinking yep. fire from a fire hose from them for them, right? Yep. Do you want sense? me to do the second? Uh, it makes sense. You want me to do the second section? Yep. The, or um, You can either do the second section or uh, we can meet on our next session and you can do it then uh, based upon the notes we've given. It's up to you. Either All right. Well, I can do it. It's not. It's going to be no better, if not worse, than what I just did. So let's go ahead and uh, cut it there. Okay. And uh, Ivan, do you have any more feedback? I know you've always got good feedback. Ivan? 
Earth diving. Earth diving. Just kidding. <laughs> I think this is the one that isn't actually Ivan. Oh, God. He, he came right. in Wilson. as two Ivans for a little bit there. Gotcha. Wilson, uh, do you have any other feedback on this? Uh, you have the academic evaluation form, right? With all of its, yep. like, yep. what gives you a three? Yep. I would take the feedback and focus on the one, like what could have made this a three from the mm. feedback form and then try to apply that in the next class section you teach. Okay. Here's my, here's my homework for you. I want you, I'll post this up tomorrow. I want you to watch your presentation and use the academic form and evaluate and grade yourself. Grade um, yourself. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, and then I want you to send, uh, take a picture of that and send it to me. Okay. So, One thing that neither of you guys caught, but I, I would agree, I would catch myself on this is in my objectives, I actually said I would we would calculate the total pressure exerted on a diver's body. And I never actually did that, but I said that I did it. And I so if I'm grading myself, I failed on that one. Absolutely. Yeah. No, there's there's a couple points that I would have zeroed you out on, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but I was I'm, I'm, I was focusing more on the overview than uh the general yeah. idea. Um, I wanted you to hit the key points of this, yep. um, but I wanted to get. Uh, I knew this was how this was going to go. To be honest, yeah, I was not too far off um, <laughs> of where we're at. So, Ivan, do you have any more feedback? Uh, I, I missed another good section of it here. So, uh, yeah, not not right now. But as I said before, I think overall he did really good. It's just getting used to presenting the information in an order that's more uh, digestible for. The individuals and at course after knowing them so um are we doing another another section for we're it? gonna we're gonna cut it there we're gonna go through and uh we're gonna ted this real quick um oh. and uh just for wilson and, and caleb so uh wilson tell me what you learned tonight uh, uh, about presenting uh just further reinforcing the importance of constantly sharpening. Um, I mean, I've been through this close to a dozen times by this point. And even still, there's things that I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to do that. Or I would have forgot to do that. Because like, I'm going through and I'm like, oh, he did a really good job. And then I'll read through the standards and be like, oh, yeah, that, you know. And so it's, it's important to always go back through and make sure that you're meeting every standard. So, Caleb, explain to me why you think it, it would be important for a personal relationship um, throughout this whole process from the very from the very get go. With a student. With everything. Um, so if I understand your correct your question correctly, the the in my mind. The relationship. With the students or with each other, like the way we approach this is far better when it's done relationally that's part the act of learning is kind of tying into that a little bit we're, we're we're not just running through information regurgitating information we are in connecting it to our lives as divers and as individuals even beyond diving um in, in a way that makes it easier to remember more applicable more engaging like you like feedback you gave david is like you didn't really you didn't really excite me on it. You just, <laughs> the other word you use ever, but um, that's relational connecting that that's the relational aspect of it in my mind. Hey, Wilson, can you uh, describe to me why uh, personal stories would be important throughout this process? Uh, personal stories help it make it be more relatable. If I wanted to learn from a robotic book, I could just go read the book. I don't need you. I need you to be above and beyond what I can read in the book. Hmm. Absolutely. So that that's that's some of the key points. I mean, just going through building that relationship through this process, and then uh, finally, help me understand, uh, Caleb. What do we need to know, and why? When do we need to know it? Why Why do you think that's important? It's important because. The sequence in which we think through this can matter just as is very important for remembering it or just in, internalizing it. So if I'm talking about the physics of pressure and we're not even barely figured out what a snorkel is yet, I've got we're not talking about what we need to know when we need to know it. We need to talk about the snorkel first. <laughs> 
and um, and that and not following that can actually cause more confusion than there was before you started giving information. Absolutely. So yeah, think about that. So as you go through this, there's three uh, any open water presentation. I want you guys to think three things for me. What do they need to know? When do they need to know it? As I'm giving my presentation, make sure I'm following through with art, actual experience, retail opportunities, and continuous con ed training, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those are really easy to think about through this process. And then what is our end goal? Everything's got to have an end goal. What are we doing, right? If we go on a vacation, our end goal is to get to Hawaii and dive, right? Or or go to a luau. I want to, I want to see girls in hula skirts uh, doing the hula thing, right? Or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, right? But we've got a goal um, that we're trying to accomplish with this. Well, the, the initial goal that you might think would be, I wanted to create safe divers, mm -hmm. but I want you to back up and think a little bit bigger than that. I want your goal should be at the end of this class, when I am done and I sign my name on the line, you can think of it one of two ways. I used to say that I'll sign your, your certification, not your death certificate. I want you to be a safe diver and always come back. But I want you to take that a little bit more personally. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to send you off to dive with my, my precious loved one and come back and not hurt them or hurt yourself. I want to be able to trust that I can send you off with the, my most precious person in the entire world and you guys will both return safely. And I don't have to question that. Mm -hmm. So that's the end goal. I want you to look at that's a very personal statement. And as you're training somebody, Caleb, would you trust this person to go diving with Carrie? Mm -hmm. If not, Whether she had insurance or not. Right. Just kidding. <laughs> so that's 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 what I like to think about is the end goal. Would I trust this person with the person who's most precious in my life? Mm -hmm. Now, honestly, if if I sent him off with Nikki and there was a problem. Nikki would just drown him and come back to the surface. So Nikki's a strong diver and she could just handle it. But, you know, would I send them off with Brittany um, or uh, Taylor or, or one of my other kids, right? Or Owen, you know, one of the other kids. So um, think about that. Th those are the kind of the three things, three areas I want you to kind of consider through this process. What do they need to know? When do they need to know it? Um, and, and in terms of structure, art, actual mm -hmm. experience throughout the process, and actual experience is all relationship, a retail opportunity that ties to something because they trust me and because it makes sense mm -hmm. and can con ed. Why would I want to continue diving? Why would I want to continue investing in this mm -hmm. with the end goal of returning with my precious loved one? Makes you know, sense. I, I trust you with my money and my life, right? Yep. So that's that's what I've got for you today. Um, those are the key points. Ivan, you, uh, anything you want to expand upon that? Uh, no, I think you uh, covered it all pretty well there. So, awesome. Well, guys, I appreciate you. Um, Ivan, you want to hang back for a minute while they after they kick off? Sure. I'm going to.